All right, I'm going to walk you through use substitution, and I'm going to give you three different perspectives on it. Uh, I say perspectives because they're all the exact same thing. All of these will give us the same answer. All of these are really just doing a use substitution. Sometimes we're going to do the reverse chain rule if something is really easy. Sometimes we can manipulate it from the get-go and make it right into UDU or something. We have the vision as to what U is and what DU is going to be. And sometimes we're not really sure what's going to happen and we have to go through the whole traditional formal U substitution process. Okay, and I'm going to do all of these examples um, in these three perspectives. Obviously, we get the same answer on them all and then you can pick which way works best for you. Okay, reverse chain rule. So first of all, what's the chain rule? Well, when we apply the chain rule, if we took the derivative of e to the 2x, we'd get e to the 2x times 2. See how when we take a derivative of an exponential, we get the exponential times the derivative of the argument. We create a factor of 2. Well, if we do the reverse chain rule, considering we're taking the antiderivative, well, the antiderivative of e to the 2x is just e to the 2x, and then apply the chain rule. Divide by 2. That's as easy as it gets. The reverse chain rule is just dividing by it instead of multiplying by it because you're doing the antiderivative. Okay, so we create that factor of one half. Again, dividing by two and a half is the same thing. Or we can manipulate it. And when I say manipulate, I mean we can algebraically do stuff to the integrand, meaning this guy, without changing its value. I'm going to multiply by two right here, and I'm going to multiply by a half. Do you see how it didn't change anything? I multiplied by two and I multiplied by a half. I didn't change the value of the integral, except what did I do? What is e to the 2x and 2dx? Well, that's e to the u du. So really, I've changed the integral to a u integral because I made it. So I have e to the u. And then look, I have du sitting, sitting right there. And that's a standard rule. The integral of e to the u du is e to the u. So I get 1 half e to the u, where u is 2x. And again, I have the same thing. Again, I manipulated it. I multiplied by 2 and I multiplied by a half. I needed the 2. I really need that 2 because if this is 2x, I need 2dx to be my du. And then if you go through formal u substitution, you're just writing out what you actually did there. If u is 2x, du, the differential is 2dx. And then I can make a substitution that's integral of e Instead of 2x, I write u, and then what's dx? Well, if you use this, dx is du divided by 2. So I substitute in for dx and write du over 2, right? That's what this t tells me. If I solve that for dx, it'd be du over 2. And then I take this and I substitute in, in this for dx, and that for, uh, excuse me, u for 2x. And now I have this. I can factor out that half. And I have the integral of e to the u du, which is the standard formula. The integral of e to the u du is just e to the u, and I get one half e to the u, or u is 2x. You're like, oh my goodness, you just said the same thing three times. Well, of course I did. Of course I'm going to get the same answer. It's the same integral. This is the formal u substitution where I identify u, I write down du, and then I substitute. I take u, and I anywhere I see a 2x, I'm going to put a u. And then anywhere I see this dx, I'm going to put du over 2. And I literally just substitute in for those two things. I change my integral to have only u's and du's. And then I do the integral once I get to the basics. Or I could have manipulated it from the very get-go. I'm like, oh, I know I'm going to make that u. So then I know if that's u, I need a du. I need 2 there. So multiply by 2, multiply by half, and then roll. Or you're like, oh, it's just so easy, this is just reverse chain rule. Of course, when I take the antiderivative, I'm going to divide by 2. And I get the same thing. Same thing down here. What's the integral of cosine of, of, of 3x? Well, it's sine of 3x. What would happen if I take the derivative of a trig function with a 3x? I'm going to multiply by 3. So I'm going to have to divide by 3 using the reverse chain rule. Again, the reverse chain rule is when you have the easiest thing of course, you just divide by that factor instead of multiply by it. Well, if I know I want to manipulate it, I can just put a 3 in. If I put a 3 in, I have to put a 1 third in again. I can't, I can't change the value of this thing, but I can multiply by 3 and divide it by 3. That didn't do anything. 
But then this three really is over here with that dx. This is one third, the integral of cosine u. If u is three x, then du is just three dx. Boom, I just made du happen. And I get a one third out front. But now I have the basic. The integral of cosine of u du is sine u. Sine u, but u is three x. Of course, I get the same thing. Over here, you're just gonna go through that whole formal thing. u is three x, meaning du is three dx. If you solve for dx, you're gonna say that dx is equal to du over three. And then if you substitute in the integral of cosine, instead of three x, put u. And instead of dx, put du over three. Allows you to factor out that one third. And then we're left with the integral of cosine u du, but that's a standard integral. The integral of cosine u du is just sine u. So we get one third sine of u, but u is three x. Hopefully you're starting to see that of course all of these things, same things, what, no matter what perspective you're using, whether it's formal u substitution or you have manipulate, and I also like to use the word vision. You have the vision of the rule and then you just make it happen. You manipulate this so you get e to u du and then you have that factor you create. Or if it's super easy like these two particular examples are, well you can just do the reverse chain rule and divide. They're not always gonna be as easy that you can just see them, okay? Let's do kind of two more examples. And again, this is just gonna be u substitution part one. We'll do more difficult one. I just kind of wanted to get you started first. Okay, This all of these integrals are x over x squared plus three. And when you think about this, the big rule here is that eventually all of these need, need to turn into this. We're all gonna use this rule on all of them. Eventually this is gonna be a quadratic and this is a line, uh, a linear function, and they're all gonna turn into this. That's our big rule here. It's just a logarithm rule. Okay, so how do we make this happen? Well, the, min, the, the reverse chain rule is a little difficult here. You're not exactly sure, so I'm gonna hold off on this and I'll, I'll go back and explain how that will make sense. But let's go here to manipulate. If I manipulate this and I think, well, I'm gonna make that u, right? I'm gonna make u x squared plus three. I would love for there to be a two there because if this is u x squared plus three, then du is two x dx, huh, fine. I would love a two there. So put a two there, put a two, put a half. I didn't actually do anything, but now look, one half the integral. If this is u, there's du. If u is x squared plus three, then du is two x dx. And I have the exact same formula that I knew I was going to get. I have the standard integral of du over u, natural log of u. One half natural log of u, where u is x squared plus three. Okay. Now if I go the formal way, again, it's doing the same thing. I'm going to say, you know what? I think this is a logarithm rule. I'm going to let the denominator be u. u is x squared plus 3. du is then 2x dx, which implies that dx is actually du over 2x. Now I'm going to substitute in. So this is the integral of x over, well, x squared plus 3, that's just u. And then dx, dx is du all over 2x. Look what happens. My x's cancel out. Again, if they didn't cancel out and you still had integrals with u and x's, you did something wrong. Or this isn't a u substitution problem because they need to cancel. That 2 in the denominator is the same thing as a half out in front. And then I'm left with the integral of du over u. That's a standard formula. 1 half natural log of u, where u is x squared plus 3, and I get the same thing. Over here, trying to do the reverse chain rule, again, you know this is a logarithm rule, and if you took the derivative of x squared, you'd get a 2, and so you're just missing a 2, and so then if you divide by 2, boom, you get that half. And again, that, that one's a little harder to see using the reverse chain rule, but certainly manipulating it, not necessarily going through that whole process is certainly possible. You know you want a two there, put a two, put a half, and now you have, you've created, you've manipulated it so you have the perfect scenario, du over u. And again, it's a logarithm rule. All 
All right, down here, this is kind of power rule. And again, it's one of those things that you know this is going to be some power. This is going to be u to the fourth, and you're going to do some integral. And you're like, oh man, well, look what's inside here. This is like a 6x for the derivative. So I guess I'm missing a 6 here, so I'm going to end up dividing by 6, right? If I took the derivative, I'd get a 6, so then I'm going to have to divide by 6. So it's going to be all of this. If you try to do this totally just in your head, it's going to be this to the fifth. I'm going to have to divide by 5 based on the power rule. And then I was missing that 6. So then really I'm going to have that. That's probably too hard. Again, I'm not going to really use this method. You know, the reverse chain rule once I get to a more complicated thing. But certainly manipulating it, I can. If that's my u, well, I know I'm going to need du's. And if I look here, du is 6 Actually, like, oh, cool, I have that x. But again, if you didn't have that x, you'd be in trouble. You wouldn't be able to do this problem. You want to put a 6 there. So, well, put a 6, put a 1, 6. I didn't actually change anything. And then look, what happens? 1, 6, the integral, u to the 4th, du. That's exactly a standard formula. It's just power rule. Again, you needed the x. You want that x there. You actually need it there. And then you apply a 6 because you know that the derivative of this inside, 3x squared plus 2, is 6x. And now you have u to the 4th, du. Well, the integral is just power rule. The integral of u to the 4th is u to the 5th over 5 plus c. Oh, don't forget plus c. And then, of course, u is that. So then you have, and again, this is 6 times 5, and you get 30. So this is 3x squared plus 2 to the 5th all over 30 plus c. And it's exactly what we had there. And this last one is just formally going through it. You're thinking it's power rule, so make that u. 3x squared plus 2 du is 6x dx, which says that dx is equal to du over 6x. Make your substitution. x, 3x squared plus 2 is u, u to the fourth, and then dx is du over 6x. The x's cancel. This 6 in the denominator can be factored out as a 1 6 integral of u to the 4th du, and then the other, that being a standard rule. Integral of u to the e, he, u to the 4th du is u to the 5th over 5 plus c. Plug back in u, and you get 1 30th times u, which is 3x squared plus 2 uh, to the 5th plus c. And of course, you get the same thing. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of show you u substitution. Some of you are going to like the very mechanical, slightly robotic way of doing formal u substitution. Identify u, find du, make substitutions, change the integral to all u's, do the integral, substitute back in. Not too bad. Some of these are just going to be easy enough that you're like, oh man, I know what to do. This is u and that's going to be a du. So I need a two there. Great. Put a two, put a half, boom. It's doing this same thing a little faster. Once the integrals get harder, you're not really going to use reverse chain rule much. Reverse chain rule, honestly, is really just for like super easy ones like cosine 3x, e to the 2x, sine of 2x, things like that. Uh, if you start manipulating them too much more, then you're going to have to kind of use these perspectives. It doesn't matter which one you do. This one is just a faster version of the use substitution and kind of save some space, but really all of them end up being the same thing. Okay, this was part one. I will look to do more difficult use substitutions, uh, mostly with the, the formal process um, in the next video.